Hi, my name is Andreina Mijan Ferro. I work at the Jocelyn Diabetes Center in Boston, Massachusetts. And today I'm gonna to be sharing with you some concepts around telemedicine. What is telemedicine? Telemedicine is the practice of medicine through communication technologies to care at a distance, meaning the provider and the patient are at different locations and they connect via the phone or video. Providers use video platforms that are HIPAA compliant to protect the patient's privacy. And also both patients and providers must be at a quiet place where they can have privacy. What are the pros and cons of telemedicine? Let's start with the cons. First, you need high speed or broadband internet. That's not available everywhere. The same as you need a smartphone or a computer that has a video camera on it so that you can communicate or conference with your doctor. You also need a quiet and private place and that may be difficult these days because of the fact that we are staying at home in and sometimes that may be difficult for you to find these days. The same as there are limitations about the types of physical examinations that your provider may be able to do. So not everything is gonna be able to be conveyed over the video or with words. So sometimes doctors need to do other things and, and that may represent a limitation. Also the technical difficulties. Although the systems nowadays are fairly simpler than they used to be, it still needs uh, some degree of, you know, technological abilities. So depending on how used you are to using the computer or doing different things on your phone, like downloading apps and things like that, you know, that may impose a challenge for you. And that may definitely be a barrier. But always talk to your doctor's office to try to walk through the, the apps and everything and, and, and see how far you can get. But definitely there are pros to telemedicine. First, at this time, it's increasing access to care by at the same time that we reduce the transmission of the COVID-19 virus. So that's definitely something that it's important for us to consider the fact that yes, you know, you can see your doctor through telemedicine, you can talk to your dietitian, you can still do your uh, therapy through telemedicine. And, and that's something that it's definitely good. Also, it's convenient, you know, the doctor goes to you, you are home or you're at work and, and you can access care and also saves time. You don't have to travel anywhere to see your provider and those are good things. What can you do to get ready for your first telemedicine appointment? First, make sure that the room that you will be using has enough light so that the provider can see you well. The same as it's a place that it's quiet and private. Make sure that you have written down all the questions that you want to discuss with your provider. It is very important that uh, you have them written down so that with all the anxiety of using this new technology, you won't forget about the important things that you want to discuss with your provider. Have a list of the medications that you need refills. Make sure that you have written down if you use a glucometer, make sure that you have a glucose log at least four to seven days of your blood glucose results so that you can share that with your provider at the time. You can also uh, download your pump reports. And if you use a CGM or a continuous glucose monitor that you can do the same and share the data with your provider. And you have, make sure that you have a list of all the medications that you're taking with you. And if you need them to fill any type of a form or provide you with a letter for work or for anything else that you may need, make sure that you have all of those pieces written down and ready for the time of your appointment. Does your insurance covers for telemedicine? The best way to answer that question is always calling your insurance. 
look for your insurance card, call the number and ask them about what they are covering. Now we are living through the COVID-19 public health emergency and insurance such as Medicare are making payments for telehealth in a way that they were not doing before this emergency. How do people pay for telemedicine appointments? In the current situation, more health insurances are covering telemedicine, not only in rural areas, but all across the United States. So it's important to know your benefits and also know if your partic particular insurance has also uh, make any changes to the copayments that you have to pay. So it's important to always be informed and make sure that you know that before your appointment. Can medications be prescribed as usual through telemedicine? Yes, when you talk to your doctor through the video conferencing with your PCP, with your diabetes specialist, this is usually something that it's part of the routine practice of your medical encounter. So make sure that you have written down all of the prescriptions that are coming up and things that you may need to change through this time of the public health emergency and COVID-19. Some insurances are allowing you to order 90 day supplies of uh, medications and also a uh, some of the restrictions around supplies for CGMs have also been waived in terms of you don't have to be in person at the office in the clinic in order for Medicare to order so that you are able to order your regular supplies. That's important to know the same as for pumps, but you need to still see your provider every 90 days. Just you can use telemedicine for that. Can barriers be overcome to use telemedicine? It depends on the barrier. So if the barrier is a technological problem, most likely either the doctor's office or the telemedicine platform that the patient is using, they give tutorials, they have always a technological support phone numbers where you can reach out and uh, you can talk to someone that can help you walk through the steps to connect with your doctor. So these are when it refers to technological difficulties. There may be other difficulties such as that the internet service in your area is not, uh, the speed is not high enough. And this, this is a challenge. And sometimes it's that one is very hard to overcome. So it depends on the barrier, but what it's most important is that you always communicate these to your provider to see if there are possible solutions for those. After answering those questions about telemedicine, let me now get into telemedicine and me. I am a Venezuelan American and Spanish is my mother tongue. I started working at Jocelyn in March 28, 2005. That was 15 years ago, and I celebrated it working remotely with an amazing team of caring providers, educators, and amazing administrators that are working daily to continuing to improve the lives of patients with diabetes. What I have been hearing from patients and providers is how great it is to connect through phone or video, but connecting is the common denominator. I have been using telemedicine as a patient in the last few weeks too, and I am grateful for the ingenuity of the human spirit. If you have not tried telemedicine, I encourage you to give it a chance. But please, take care, stay safe, 
And remember that all of us, the diabetes community, we are in this together. I would also like to thank Kelly Close and Diatribe for giving me the opportunity to record and produce my first video. It was nerve-wracking, but fun. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you.